Here's one where I think that it's really important that you know your command words. They have not asked you to explain why this graph is this shape. They have asked you to describe the trends in the graph. Now that is really, really important. It's a much easier question than I think people will have thought the first time they came across that. Then again, although it is using the graph, explaining, determining, it's really a definition of simple harmonic motion question. This one, looking at this, I'm thinking, gosh, on earth, what is this all about? Okay, but then actually you get into anything. Okay, I do know some things about this. I know about gravitational field strength. I've got some equations that can tell me about that. But it's quite an interesting graph because there's two kind of relationships going on. Um, describe how gravitational field strength varies with distance from the center of the Earth. It's not explain why, it's describe how. So actually forget everything, forget using any equations at all. Just tell us what's the trend up until here what's the trend after here okay well i can see up until r naught then g gravitational field strength is proportional to distance okay um, and then after r naught well it's a curve so there's an inverse relationship for what kind of inverse is it well that is where a little bit of prior knowledge about gravitational fields or any radial field comes in handy it's going to be uh, varying with inverse square but you can actually see the inverse square because of the difference in kind of not the difference in gradient but it's much steeper compared to how shallow in there inverse laws have equal but inverse steepnesses there inverse square much steeper at first then kind of decreasing rate of change later okay so um so you can actually use the shape of this to work out that that is an inverse square law. Okay, well, second mark in this first part is for saying, well, actually, after r naught, the distance is greater than r naught, g decreases. The statement that g is proportional to 1 over r squared or following an inverse square law. I would probably be satisfied with writing the algebra but you might want to state that in words, that gravitational field strength is proportional to one over the distance squared. So I actually find this completely fascinating myself. A scientist suggests the following, and I remember this from a text, but that's why I'm finding it quite easy. But it, I'm going to show you how you can work out how easy this question is. If a tunnel made for the center of the Earth, an object dropped from one end would accelerate downward until it reached the center. It would then decrease in speed until it reached the other end with a speed of zero. The object would then return the other way, undergoing simple harmonic motion. So actually the whole question is just actually about simple harmonic motion. Using the graph between 0 and r naught, which we've said is proportional, g is proportional to distance, determine whether simple harmonic motion would occur. So actually, what would happen to somebody in free fall going through a tunnel straight through the core of the Earth would be they would just keep oscillating from one side to the other. And I just think it's a really funny idea of somebody going and saying hello to Australia and then popping up and saying hello to me again. And it would just continuously happen. Okay. Well, why? Well, um, let's say, well, if we're going to determine whether something is simple harmonic motion, it needs to satisfy one key thing, which is that the acceleration is proportional to minus the displacement. Okay, so this is the definition of um, simple harmonic motion. Okay, something is varying in acceleration proportionally to its distance from the the equilibrium position and it's always accelerating towards the equilibrium position okay so is that the case so yes in this case acceleration is g which is varying proportionally with the distance from the center of the earth it would in indeed be negative if we had this graph the other way around but yes that is the case the first mark is just forgetting the statement that for the object the acceleration is equal to G. Okay, that's the first first point point, or you could say the force is mg. That's like a restoring force, if you like, it's always towards that center point. Okay, this force is proportional to the displacement from the center of the earth. And it's always towards the center of the earth or it's always opposite direction to the displacement 
This is just a few laws where the negative is a really important component of it. Okay, so therefore, A is proportional to minus delta X, so SHM. I hope that makes sense. You can also obviously define it as this, which is just a statement of the same thing. Okay. Right, okay, so this one, there's two parts to this question, really. First of all, they're talking about, can you derive an expression for the period of an SHM? And then they're asking, can you des describe an expression for the period of a circular motion? Okay, the, the an orbit. Um, so we've been talking about this, well, there's, there's two kind of ways to do this. Um, similarly, as there was two ways to answer this previous one, you can talk about defining SHM as acceleration being proportional to the displacement or force being proportional to the displacement and always towards a center. So in st there's kind of advantages and disadvantages to both. I prefer working through the accelerations in this and one of my students thinks that's silly and thinks I should be working through the forces, uh, but the mark scheme gives either or, so that's that means they're both acceptable ways. So I'll go first, acceleration, is proportional to minus delta x, okay? Um, therefore, if we look in our centripetal, sorry, in our SHM section, we get the definition of that. A is equal to minus omega squared x, where omega is the angular velocity. So talking about the kind of phase space. So all of this is really just teasing out the analogy between SHM and circular motion. If you've got omega, you've always got the time period since um, omega is 2 pi over the time period or time period is 2 pi over omega. So I'll just copy that down. So that follows that omega is obviously 2 pi on the time period. All right, so using this, sub that into there and then hopefully we'll be able to get an expression for the time period of our um, SHM minus 4 pi squared over t squared x. Okay, and then I'm going to rearrange all that for t. And it's, it becomes a little bit muddy because there's a negative in there. But we'll talk about that in a second. So t squared a is minus 4 pi squared x. So t is minus 4 pi squared x over a and root all that. So um, <coughs> here's where we get a little issue because we can't obviously root a negative. So I'm going to say, well, we're talking about gravitational acceleration, which is always a negative anyway. So this minus here and this minus means that we can just look at that as being a kind of modulus of. So t is equal to 2 pi root x over a. Now that should kind of uh, that should kind of tally with your understanding of simple harmonic oscillators because here it's going to have the same dimensions as one of these two equations here. Okay, being the last one, it's not a pendulum, but it does have the same di um, dimensions, so that's acceptable. Now, what is this in relation to our data we've got? Well. R naught is X and A is G. So the last thing I might just do, just to show the examiner I'm not an idiot, is R naught over G. Okay, that's the first one. And the second one is asking for a um, equation, an expression for orbital period as well. Okay, so they're saying that this should be the same time. Well, now we're gonna use our equations from our circular motion side, okay, where F is mv squared over r, or I'm going to stick with the accelerations because I just think cancelling m's later is silly, a is v squared over r. So now I need to get time somehow from v, so I need to look, is there a way that I can get omega in the v part there? So yeah, v is omega r, and remembering if I've got omega, I've also got time period. So I can just sub this in instead of omega. Okay. And then I can put this in in my v squared, 4 pi squared r squared over t squared over t squared r. 
Okay, obviously one of the R's cancels for the next line. And I want to rearrange for T, so I'll move that while I'm doing it. Okay, and then I'm going to, ah, it's the same maths as this, isn't it? So T squared is four pi squared R over A. I know you could do this a little bit quicker, especially as you've previously done it. Um, T is two pi root R over A, where R and A are R naught and G. Okay, so it's the same kind of maths and that we'd expect that because often you can solve an SHM problem using any of your circular motion expressions and um, your, your circular motion ones, you can often use some of your simple harmonic motion maths. It's the same kind of maths because if we're talking about a simple harmonic oscillator, we're talking about something that in one dimension would have the same properties as an object in a circle. They're both following sinusoidal relationships. Okay, that algebra on first look, it looked pretty complicated, but really it's quite straightforward as long as you're resilient enough to have enough experience with your formula sheet that you know kind of common derivations and that you know those quick um, conversions between two pi and omega, for example, lambda and half-life. That they're going to give you one thing um, and you're going to think, well, I haven't got enough information, but you know something because you know something else. So I'll just mention this briefly. This is what the other method is. Essentially, you're equating the two forces. You're equating the gravitational force with this um, MV, this force being MR omega squared here. So um, that's how they've done that. My student maintains that's, that's simpler. Okay, and certainly he's got a nice elegant solution there as well. I think that first one, it actually uses kind of circular motion things, so it's not the way I was thinking of going, but we both get to the same um, equation at the end. And then similarly, it's just the same thing over here, but instead of using, um, instead of using F equals MR omega squared, he's used um, MV squared over R, for being the force rather than this one, which is more likely to be a, a simple harmonic motion um, e expression.